Welcome to our Hong Kong Brief Show, where we dive into the latest happenings around the globe with a special focus on Hong Kong and its interaction with the world. Today, we're unpacking a trio of intriguing developments that are stirring conversations from the corridors of power to the bustling streets of Hong Kong. First up, we're looking at how European companies are increasingly finding it tough to engage with China's Belt and Road Initiative, amidst a backdrop of geopolitical tensions and a changing investment landscape. It seems the once warm embrace between Europe and China's ambitious infrastructure project is cooling off, raising questions about future collaborations. Next, we turn our gaze closer to home, where Hong Kong is grappling with finding its footing in a rapidly changing world. Voices from within are calling for a rejuvenation strategy that goes beyond reminiscing about past glories. The city is urged to redefine its competitive edge and align more closely with regional visions, particularly the Greater Bay Area, to ensure its relevance on the international stage remains undiminished. Lastly, we're exploring the curious case of gold's recent market behavior, which seems to defy traditional economic logic. With prices soaring despite factors that would typically lead to a decrease, central banks, particularly in China, India, and Turkey, are on a buying spree, aiming to diversify away from the US dollar. This strategic shift in gold investment is reshaping market dynamics and offering a fresh perspective on the precious metal's role in the global economy. Stay tuned for detailed insights on these compelling stories. In the shifting sands of global politics and economic strategies, the landscape for international investments and collaborations is undergoing significant transformations. One such example is the changing dynamics between European companies and China's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. Once a beacon for European investment, the initiative is now receiving a colder reception from European firms, as reported by the South China Morning Post. The geopolitical complexities and growing tensions have made it increasingly challenging for European entities to engage with the BRI. Despite some firms still being involved in projects under this initiative, they confront a myriad of obstacles, including divergent views on infrastructure development and apprehensions about geopolitical risks. The COVID-19 pandemic has further exacerbated these challenges, making China's domestic market less accommodating to foreign investors. German multinationals, which have previously contributed components and expertise to Chinese projects in Africa, are now struggling to find partners. This hesitancy among companies stems from differences in approaches and standards, as well as China's inclination to undertake projects independently. As China pivots toward smaller-scale infrastructure projects with its partners, European participants are faced with the need for assurances regarding environmental protection and the financial sustainability of these projects. Meanwhile, Hong Kong, a city renowned for its dynamism and as a nexus for international business, is facing its own set of challenges in maintaining its relevance in a rapidly changing world. As highlighted by Anthony Chung, a former transport and housing secretary for Hong Kong, in the South China Morning Post, the city's economic difficulties are not merely cyclical but indicative of deeper structural issues. Chung emphasizes the necessity for Hong Kong to find a new lease on life by focusing on its competitiveness and integrating more closely with the Greater Bay Area and broader Asian contexts. He advocates for a robust regional vision and calls for self-reform and enhanced collaboration to overcome the city's limitations. The tourism sector, a vital component of Hong Kong's economy, is also seeking avenues for rejuvenation. Industry leaders have voiced their concerns about the lack of coordinated efforts from the government to bolster the sector. They stress the importance of aligning Hong Kong's tourism strategies with the Greater Bay Area's overarching plans, as outlined in the South China Morning Post. The call for better government coordination and a unified approach underscores the critical need for strategic planning and execution to revitalize Hong Kong's tourism industry and, by extension, its economy. These narratives from the South China Morning Post paint a picture of the challenges and opportunities facing both European companies engaging with China's Belt and Road Initiative and Hong Kong's quest for economic revitalization. 
In both cases, the underlying theme is the need for strategic adaptation, collaboration, and a forward-looking approach to navigate the complexities of the modern global landscape. As the world continues to evolve, the ability to anticipate changes and innovate will be paramount for maintaining relevance and achieving sustainable growth. In a world where financial markets are as unpredictable as the weather, gold has been exhibiting some truly peculiar behavior, catching the eye of investors and economists alike. Traditionally seen as a safe haven in times of economic uncertainty, gold prices have been soaring to near record levels, defying the conventional wisdom that they should fall when inflation rates rise, U.S. interest rates climb, or the U.S. dollar strengthens. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, this anomaly can be attributed to a significant uptick in gold purchases by central banks, notably those of China, India, and Turkey. These countries are diversifying their reserves, moving away from the US dollar to hedge against geopolitical tensions and a looming threat of sanctions. China, in particular, has been methodically reducing its holdings of US Treasury securities while simultaneously bulking up its gold reserves. This strategic shift is seen as a protective measure against the potential seizure of its foreign reserves by the US in response to sanctions. Moreover, Chinese consumers have been displaying an insatiable appetite for gold, pouring their investments into gold and gold exchange-traded funds, despite the metal's high prices and the strong US dollar. This trend is not exclusive to China, other central banks are expected to follow suit, gradually moving away from the US bond market, although it will remain a significant part of their investment portfolios due to its unmatched size and liquidity. Switching gears to a more alarming narrative, the South China Morning Post reported a dramatic abduction in Hong Kong's bustling Sim Sha Sui shopping district. Three suspects were apprehended for the false imprisonment of a woman, who was forcefully attacked and shoved into a vehicle by two men donning black outfits, caps, and masks. The incident, which was captured on a taxi's dash cam, showed the woman desperately screaming for help as she was whisked away. Miraculously, she was later found unharmed in a car in Ma on Shan. The suspects are now under investigation, with authorities conducting searches of their homes to uncover further evidence. This shocking event has left the community on edge, highlighting concerns over public safety in one of the city's most frequented areas. On a more positive note, the South China Morning Post also shed light on a promising development project in Hong Kong's northern metropolis area. China merchants Shiko Group and New World Development have joined forces to create a mixed-use development that promises to deliver around 2,000 residential flats. This ambitious project is part of a broader initiative to integrate the northern metropolis with the Greater Bay Area, fueling future growth and development. The collaboration between these two powerhouse developers signals a significant investment in Hong Kong's infrastructure and housing market, aiming to meet the growing demand for residential spaces in the region. From the glittering allure of gold as a strategic asset to the unsettling occurrence of an abduction in a major shopping district, and the optimistic development of new residential projects, these stories weave together a tapestry of the complex and often unexpected nature of global and local events. Whether it's the strategic maneuvers of central banks, the safety concerns of city dwellers, or the ambitious plans of property developers, each narrative offers a unique insight into the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. In a world where the crossroads of culture, politics, and entertainment often meet, recent developments from Australia to Indonesia, and over to Hong Kong, showcase the dynamic and sometimes controversial nature of global initiatives and stories. From the serene landscapes of New South Wales, Australia, the Sydney Morning Herald reports a story that has stirred quite the conversation among the academic circles and beyond. The University of Wollongong, UOW, a prestigious institution, is contemplating an ambitious expansion that would mark its presence in Saudi Arabia. This move, however, is not without its detractors. Critics, including staff from UOW itself, are raising eyebrows and voices over what they perceive as a glaring hypocrisy. The bone of contention? 
Saudi Arabia's controversial human rights record. The university, on its part, maintains that the decision to open a campus in Saudi Arabia is still up in the air, with a plethora of approvals and groundwork yet to be laid before any concrete steps are taken. This story is a vivid illustration of the dilemmas and debates that often accompany international expansions, especially into territories with complex socio-political landscapes. Meanwhile, in Indonesia, a tale of cinematic triumph unfolds, as reported by Al Jazeera. Joko Anwar, a name that resonates with creativity and courage in the Indonesian film industry, is riding the waves of success with his latest film, Six a Cuber, Grave Torture. This film, a provocative exploration of religious beliefs and the concept of grave torture, has captivated the Indonesian audience, selling almost 4 million tickets since its release. Anwar, a practicing Muslim, navigates the sensitive subject matter with a nuanced touch, aiming not to judge but to provoke thought and discussion. His approach to filmmaking, treating controversial themes with respect and openness, demonstrates the power of cinema to challenge and inspire audiences. Anwar's journey from the slums to stardom is not just a personal success story but a testament to the transformative power of art. Crossing over to Hong Kong, the South China Morning Post highlights the city's ambitious plans for the sporting arena. The Hong Kong fencing championships are on the horizon, slated for November 23 to 24, and are poised to serve as a crucial test event for the upcoming national games. However, there's a catch, the success of this plan hinges on the timely completion of the Kai Tak Sports Park. The construction of this state-of-the-art venue has faced delays, casting a shadow of uncertainty over the scheduled test event. This situation underscores the challenges and pressures that come with hosting major sporting events, emphasizing the importance of infrastructure readiness in the world of sports. These stories, from the academic corridors of Australia to the cinematic landscapes of Indonesia and the competitive arenas of Hong Kong, reflect the diverse and dynamic nature of global narratives. Whether it's the debate over educational expansion into controversial territories, the power of film to challenge societal norms, or the logistical hurdles of hosting a major sporting event, these tales highlight the complexities, controversies, and triumphs that define our world today. In the rapidly evolving electric vehicle EV, market in China, foreign car makers are bracing for a tougher battle ahead. According to Michael Wu, co-president of Zhujiang Leap Motor Technology, as reported by the South China Morning Post, the ongoing price war in China's EV sector is expected to squeeze out less competitive players, particularly foreign brands. Wu emphasizes that survival in this fiercely competitive market will demand the highest levels of cost competitiveness, technological innovation, and all-round capabilities. The prediction is stark, startups and Chinese traditional car makers that pivot quickly to electric vehicles are poised to overshadow their foreign counterparts. This shift is attributed to the foreign legacy carmaker's slower pace in embracing electrification and their limited grasp of the Chinese consumer's preferences. This trend is underscored by the fact that China's homegrown EV makers have significantly increased their market share, climbing from 81.2% in the first quarter of 2020 to 85.7% in the same period in 2021. Meanwhile, in the realm of China's property market, an innovative approach is being trialed in the small city of Lishue, Zhujiang Province. Breaking away from the traditional land sales system that restricts sales to property developers, Lishue is pioneering the auction of a plot of land directly to individuals. This groundbreaking move, as detailed in the South China Morning Post, represents a significant departure from the norm, where individuals are barred from directly purchasing urban land for residential development. The initiative emerges against a backdrop of local governments grappling with the challenge of attracting developers, amid dwindling revenues from land auctions. While this experiment in Li Shui signals a potential shift in China's land system, it also highlights the complexities and time required for broader reform across the country's property market. 
In another strategic pivot within China's EV ecosystem, StarCharge, a leading provider of EV charging solutions, is setting its sights beyond the domestic market in pursuit of greater profitability. The South China Morning Post reports that amidst intense competition in China that's eroding margins, StarCharge is eyeing expansion into international markets. The company is betting on generating at least half of its gross profits from overseas operations this year, driven by the higher prices commanded by EV charging facilities abroad. Currently, the domestic market accounts for nearly 80% of StarCharge's revenue, but the company is not shying away from ambitious plans for global growth. Collaborations with global oil and gas giants like BP and Shell to transform petrol stations into EV charging points, alongside partnerships with premium carmakers such as BMW and Mercedes-Benz for the development of high-end charging solutions, underscore StarCharge's commitment to capitalizing on the lucrative opportunities in the global EV charging infrastructure market. These narratives from the South China Morning Post paint a vivid picture of the dynamic shifts and strategic maneuvers shaping China's EV market and broader economic landscape. From the intensifying price war that threatens the position of foreign car makers, through innovative land sale reforms in Li Shui, to Star Charge's ambitious global expansion plans, these developments underscore the rapid pace of change and the multifaceted challenges and opportunities that lie ahead in China's quest for technological and economic advancement. In the heart of Paris, amidst the backdrop of trade tensions and geopolitical complexities, Chinese President Xi Jinping and French President Emmanuel Macron found a harmonious note that resonated with the spirit of cooperation and mutual respect. According to Nikkei Asia, during Xi's state visit to France, the two leaders managed to sidestep potential discord over European Union probes into Chinese industries. In a move that symbolizes the depth of their discussions, she agreed not to impose retaliatory tariffs on French brandy, a gesture that undoubtedly warmed the hearts of French brandy producers and connoisseurs alike. The meeting between Xi and Macron was not just about avoiding trade spats, it was also a platform for advancing bilateral relations in several key sectors. The duo inked deals that promise to usher in new energy into the electric vehicle battery domain, a sector that is pivotal for the future of sustainable transportation. Beyond the realms of technology, they envisaged collaborations in the art of cosmetics, the tradition of winemaking, and the innovative field of hydrogen production. This convergence of interests comes at a time when EU-China relations are strained over issues like cheap Chinese exports, allegations of Chinese espionage, and Beijing's stance on the conflict in Ukraine. Yet, in Paris, Xi and Macron demonstrated that dialogue and diplomacy can pave the way for common ground, even in turbulent times. Shifting the focus to Singapore, a different kind of leadership transition is taking place, one that is marked by anticipation and the promise of a new direction. Lawrence Wong, the incoming prime minister, is stepping into a role that is fraught with challenges and high expectations. As reported by Nikkei Asia, Singapore has experienced remarkable economic growth over the past two decades, with a 250% increase in GDP per capita. However, this growth has not been without its pains. The rapid expansion of the foreign labor force, while a driver of economic success, has also led to societal issues such as congestion, competition for jobs, and soaring housing costs. Wong's predecessor, Li Xinlong, faced criticism for policies that contributed to these challenges, prompting the government to enhance income redistribution measures. These efforts aim to ensure that the prosperity generated by globalization is shared more equitably among Singaporeans. Wong now inherits the task of navigating these complex issues, with the expectation that he will introduce a greater degree of openness and inclusivity in governance. The people of Singapore are looking for leadership that not only drives economic growth but also addresses the nuanced concerns of a population that feels the pressures of globalization. The journey ahead for Wong is one of balancing growth with inclusivity, a challenge that is emblematic of the broader dilemmas facing leaders in an interconnected world.
whether in Paris or Singapore, the stories of Xi, Macron, and Wang reflect the intricate dance of diplomacy, leadership, and public policy in an era where the global and the local are inextricably linked. As these leaders navigate their respective challenges, their actions will not only shape the futures of their nations, but also influence the contours of global relations and governance. Amidst the complexities, the pursuit of common ground and shared prosperity remains a beacon of hope for a world in need of unity and understanding. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of six do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the six do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.